Okay, we're going to jump right in and we're going to be making Kellogg's cornflake chicken. And I found this recipe in this box of recipes that I got um, from my gram. Um, it's cut out of the cornflake box, which is super cute. So we're going to redo the recipe and then we'll get started. So you're supposed to use seven cups of cornflakes um, that are crushed up into one and three quarter cups, then one egg, one cup of fat-free milk, one cup of all-purpose flour, half teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper, three pounds of chicken breast, and three tablespoons of butter or margarine. So I'm modifying most things because I just like to cook with what I have and what my heart tells me because I feel like baking is much more of a science and cooking is just a general concept of fat, salt, acid, and heat. So you can just do what, do what your heart tells you. So I'm going to be using however much this much of cornflakes is. I think it's more than a cup in a three quarters, but maybe not. But it's fine because I just poured a couple chugs of the box in here and then I crush it up and it's good to go. So then I have one egg and it says fat-free milk, but I'll be using 2% because that's what's in my fridge because fat-free milk kind of tastes like water. Um, salt, pepper, good. Okay, three pounds chicken breast I will not be using. I will be using 1.2 pounds of thin cut chicken breast because it cooks faster and like, I don't really like the thick chicken situation. I, it's hard to tell if it's done cooking or not done cooking and then you have to cut it and check. So we'll be using the thin cut chicken breast. And I just feel like, for like a coated chicken, it's like a better bread to chicken ratio if it's the thin cut. Um, what else will I be modifying? Oh, if you're choosing margarine or butter, always choose butter. There are very few exceptions to that rule. Exception number one, if you're making chocolate chip cookies, my whole family, mom, gram, great grandma uses butter flavored Crisco and I stand by that decision. So anyways, we're gonna get started. So the first direction is to place Kellogg's Corn Flake cereal in shallow pan or dish set aside. Excellent. We've never been more prepared for this moment. So we're just gonna dump it in there. Oh, and to crush them, I just went with the, it says, um, Oh, it doesn't have a crushing technique, but I just want that with that like standard, um, pour some in a bag and smash it with your hand. I think frequently people use like a rolling pin to do the, the banging part, but it's up to you, do what your heart calls. Okay, and then it says in a medium mixing bowl, I'm skipping that too, I'm just gonna put it in this dish. Um, we're gonna use egg and milk. So here's our one egg. You probably should crack your one egg in a separate dish and like make sure it's not rotten, but I too will not be doing that. Because we're just practical cooking here. It's like home, traditional cooking, nothing crazy. Okay, so we've cracked our egg and then we need to add our milk. So we need one cup. So here's half a cup. And then I need to get the other half. Okay, here's the milk situation, people. I have this little bit of milk that's left, but I need to fill up this other half cup. And I don't know if it's a full. Ooh. Uh, okay, we're adding more than one cup of milk. But you know what? It's not a science, okay? I think this causes my mom deep distress when I do things like this. But, you know, it turns out good. Then we're going to uh, mix slightly. So I'm just assuming we incorporate it, but like don't over whip, you know? I'm using a plastic fork because I don't want to clean the real fork after this is done. And if that tells you anything about my style of cooking, I hope that gets communicated to you properly. I feel like some cooking can be like super extravagant and fun, like you follow the recipe exactly, it's very technical, but like everyday weeknight cooking that's practical, it's gonna be passed down for generations, it's much more eyeball, see what happens, is it good, is it not? Maybe it turns out a little bit different every time, but it's easy, it takes 
20 minutes, you know? Okay, so I'm thinking that takes that. Kind of like a banana color. Then we're going to add our flour, salt, and pepper. So we have one cup of flour we will add in. Okay. Our half a teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon pepper. Good to go. Mix until smooth. We're just going to, again, just whisk it on up. I really like going through these old recipes on my grams because she would cut recipes out of like magazines and newspapers and the back of cereal boxes and stuff like that, which I certainly don't do because I just like look up a recipe on Pinterest or Google it or I ask my Google Home, hey, how do you make, I don't know, holiday stuff? And then she just tells me and I do it. So there's no like tradition behind it. There's no hunt, which is really fun. And it's fun to go through and like, this is all yellow colored because it's old and it just makes it way more fun to cook. Simple chicken. So, I don't know, maybe I should start doing that. I get, Nico has us, um, what's it called? Oh, subscribed to Bon Appetit Magazine. So maybe I should start cutting recipes out of there and keeping them so I can pass them down to my grandchildren down the road. So they'll all set, seem like that cool grandma who has like things to pass down. But you know, I'm kind of a hoarder, so I don't think I need to store more stuff, perhaps. I did this huge home parent where I went through my laundry room and closet, which is basically the only two places I have to store stuff and purge everything out. And I got rid of like, I think eight trash bags of stuff and then I donated a whole bunch of stuff. And they're still full, but I guess less full, you know? Okay, I would say this is fully mixed. So it kind of looks like pancake batter. Well, with a few chunks, but you know, little chunks never hurt nobody. Okie dokie. Then, what do we need next? Dip chicken in batter, coat with cereal, place in a shallow baking pan. Okay, so our baking pan already has Pam on it, so it won't stick, so that's good. Then we drizzle the butter on top. Excellent. I do not like to touch chicken without gloves or any sort of meat because it's kind of weird. And my mom came up with this great solution to just wear gloves, you know, when you cook. Because for a while, I just wasn't cooking meat because I didn't want to touch it. But you know, moms are pretty crafty when their college age daughter doesn't want to touch raw meat because I'm away. Okie dokie. Let's set up an assembly line, shall we? Oh, our oven is already preheating to 350. Uh, probably should have mentioned that at the beginning, but. You know, this is my first time. We're working on it. Okay, I think this is a good situation. So we're gonna go dump. I like a fully, thickly battered chicken. Like, I don't like a, just a little bit when you order at a restaurant and it's like, you know, they just put like some breadcrumbs on top and they're like, crispy chicken. No, not for me. I'm a thick, well, thin chicken, thick batter gal. Ooh, look at her. She is cute. Oh, my pan is kind of small. That was fun. Okay, chicken, chicken, chicken. I think I need way too much batter because the recipe was for three pounds of chicken, so I probably could have, like, only used a third. Here we are with too much batter, and we're not going to reuse it because I'm dipping, dipping raw chicken in it. It's okay. Toss, toss, toss. So this thing I have to figure out a situation on how to hide the junk once I'm done using it because right now I'm putting it all in my sink, which I don't know if you can see from the camera, but you probably can. Yeah. 
Okay, third piece. Oh, maybe I should save a piece of chicken. You know what? I'll do that. We're just going to make three pieces instead of four because my pan is too small and I don't want to get it. Shake, shake, shake. Like the Paradise Bartender. Shake, shake, shake. Okay, look, now we just take this all off and we're chicken free. Okay, we'll be saving this for another time. My chicken. I made fried the nest, which is pretty standard. Oh, the last thing we have to do is pour melted butter on top. So I melted a little bit, so I'm just gonna stir it up. Um, because does anyone know what happens when melted butter separates? I think it's, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that's how they make ghee, right? Clarified butter. And the ghee is just the non-dairy part. I think, I don't know. Someone let me know. Okay, we're gonna pour on top. I just feel like this may not be enough butter and I'm only making a third of the recipe, but maybe I have a different butter standard for them. Or maybe my chicken is now gonna be not crispy. I don't know, we're gonna risk it. Okay, so it's, the original recipe says that it goes in the oven for an hour, but my chicken is much thinner than a traditional chicken breast, and I'm just not sure it's going to take that long, so I'm going to put mine in at 350 for 30 minutes, and then I'm just going to stick the little meat ther thermometer in there, and if it's at 165, then, then I'll be done, and if it's not, then we'll continue to cook, and I'll keep you updated. Okay, let's have some dishwashing thoughts. Number one, while your food cooks in the oven, do your best to do the dishes while it's cooking. Because, and I feel like some of you just thought, I always do that. But if you always do that, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people who don't always do that. Because sometimes cooking takes up all of your gumption already. And that's why sometimes you just leave stuff in the sink. But it's really nice to, when you're done cooking, also be done cleaning because then you can just sit down and enjoy the food you made and it feels better, I think. I'm just lightly washing these items and putting them in my dishwasher that I'll probably not unload for a few days once it's clean. Okay, progress, not perfection. Oh, a few things I thought about that I didn't mention during the video. Number one, the Kellogg's recipe says, do not cover pan or turn chicken while baking. I feel like that would not be a crime, nor would it really change anything. I'm not going to cover my pan or turn the chicken while baking. And I'll give you the update. I think the theory behind it is that it should keep it pretty crispy. But maybe one side just gonna be soggy and we need to modify the recipe and turn it twice next time. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not a thousand percent sure on that one. This is my oatmeal bowl from this morning. I had, you know, like pre-made oatmeal but I made this apple compote stuff to go on top. So I just chopped up a very, very old Honeycrisp apple that had been in my fridge for probably two weeks. So I chopped it up into just like little cubes and then I put it on the stove with maybe a half cup of water, I don't know, enough water to steam it and make it soft, but not like too much water where it looks like the apples were drowning, you know, right in that middle area. And so I had apple water, then once that cooked down a bit and most of the water had dissolved and the apples were soft, I added in a ton of cinnamon, like a good shake. Okay, this is my this is big cinnamon and let me show you the shake situation. Okay, so these are the little shaky holes and I did like a shake, shake, shake. Then I stirred it up, let that simmer for a bit 
and didn't seem like enough cinnamon, so I did another shake, shake, shake. So you can imagine, pretty cinnamony. And so I just let that cook, and it smells like fall, and it just smells delicious. And I added in about a tablespoon of sugar-ish. Um, you don't have to because the apples naturally release sugar, making them very sweet, but I don't think it tastes like dessert for breakfast, so I added sugar. Oh, pro tip, put dishwashing soap uh, like Dawn or whatever, in your soap dispenser. Then it's so much easier to do dishes. Anyway, what else was I thinking about that I forgot to say? So, I put the apple stuff on top of my, like, microwave oatmeal. Else. Like, or maybe I just thought about it like a vanilla or oh I did a squirt of lemon. That's what my heart told me to do. I think my theory behind it was that it would bring like a pop of freshness to like a very heavy breakfast, but it still tasted pretty heavy. But that's what I wanted because I had a very busy day at work and so I wasn't sure when I'd be able to eat lunch, so I didn't want to feel like starved during the day. You know, clean cleaning. Does anyone else um, accrue coffee cups in their car? Because I do. And this one stinks. Here's an update, folks. I checked the chicken after it had been in the oven for 30 minutes. And it was at we're over 165 degrees, which is like the cooking threshold, but the outside wasn't as crispy and warm, so I put it in for 10 more minutes, which means we have time to make, I should probably be making two sides, but I think we're just gonna make one. I think we're just gonna do like chopped up carrots in the air fryer, and then I put you onto something. Any, ve any vegetable tastes better when cooked in the air fryer. And you'd be telling, you might be thinking, Carly, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Name a vegetable. Onions, better in the air fryer. Brussels sprouts, better in the air fryer. Mushrooms, the best in the air fryer, people. The absolute best. Hmm. I haven't tried broccoli, and that does seem like it might be a little bit weird because the little tree fur part might get crunchy, which I don't think I'd be into that. So, okay, maybe not all vegetables, but most are better in the air fryer. We got our air fryer at Target, and I think it was only like 80 bucks, and we use it just about every day, so I do think that expense was worth it. Um, I don't really clean my peeler. I just kind of do it all wipe, 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 and put it back in the drawer. And we're just going to set these up here, throw away our peels. Okay. Then we're gonna cut up our carrots. I think I want circles. Number one thing we do is we get turkey part of the carrot. Good boy turkey. Then we chop them up into little rounds. Um, please do not judge my knife skills. I don't think I properly hold a knife, but I'm working on it because I used to do this whole thing. Turns out you're not supposed to do that. And I'm trying to do like a smooth, down motion, but I find it difficult. Don't chop your fingers, don't chop your fingers. Yuck. Tricky. We'll do like another sit, sit. Lay down, lay down, good boy. Excellent, now we chop, chop, chop. And I'm thinking on our carrots, maybe we should put some Slap Your Mama seasoning and with some garlic. And let me tell you, I get, I get it that the point of the air fryer is to not be using any oil, but it's better if you just put a little spray something of oil on your veggies or chicken or whatever you're making in the air fryer 
because it just makes it crunchier and better and just better. this I've seen it on TikTok and in recipes it says in 1956 Wilda Mary Fentanyl Walker gave birth to the creator of this gave birth to the creator of this award winning her kid every time she uses it she receives a loving slap on the back and a kiss on the cheek thanking her for another great tasting Cajun dish okay so her kids are like Thanks, Mom, for making this for me. Recommended for all dishes from popcorn, popcorn to seafood, breakfast to late night snacks, gourmet foods to french fries. Our carrots are gonna be gourmet, people. Hoping your family and friends enjoy it as much as we do. The walkers, how wholesome. Oh, there's a recipe on it. Oh my goodness. When we're done with this, we should cut it out and add it to our box. It's called Mama Jen's Shrimp Dip. Shrimp Dip. Ooh, that looks good. It says catsup. I'm assuming ketchup. Yum. Real Cajun seasoning for real Cajun cooking. Certified Cajun. Wonderful. Okay. So we're gonna spread out our carrots, add some pan. Ew. Toss, toss, toss. Like a little sprinkle. And slap your mama. You want to taste of this? It's like normal seasoning smell, but kind of sweet again. Mm. Oh, it's so salty. Our chicken's done. Okay, in hindsight, I added quite a bit of this and it is exceptionally salty. What's it? Ingredients, salt is the first ingredient, which is obviously the most. Red pepper, black pepper, and garlic. Okay, so we don't need garlic. I just, there's so much salt. I'm not used to that at all. For a quarter teaspoon is 13%. A quarter teaspoon is 13% of your daily salt. Quite a bit. So the air fryer has like program settings for french fries or I don't even know what they are, fish, meat, all those options, and it has little pictures that you can select. I have never once used a little picture. I always cook just about everything at 400 degrees for a 10 minutes, and then I just look at it, and if it looks done, I eat it. And if not, I just shake it around so more edges are that aren't crispy are now going to get crispy, and I cook it for like three, five, maybe 10 more minutes, and then I look at it again because are you telling me I need a recipe for an air fryer? Absolutely not, people. It's like the microwave. You just see what happens. We're going to dice, slice, chop. Okay. One of those up with the green pepper so we can garnish our dish and look sort of fancy. And you may be telling me, Carly, those, I mean, <laughs> green onions. Those green onions, they look wilted. I don't believe that green onions ever go bad unless they're like slimy. You may be saying, Carly, no, let me tell you. Yes, it's fine, chop them up. I mean, maybe you just don't eat them like. One thing I don't care for about green onions is I'm not confident that there's not dirt left in the little tubes. Are green onions in the leek family? Or maybe leeks are in the onion family? I'd like to know that too. That and why the ghee separates, or no, no, no. Butter separates, does that make ghee? 
what's the two parts of the butter that are separating? Again, I have a lot of questions about that situation. And the onion family. Did you know that peanuts are part of the legume family? Which are beans? Hmm? I was wondering if that's because peanuts grow on little bushes. And apparently, beans grow on little bushes. Um, I'm pretty sure my brother Kurt and I were talking about this at our last picnic. And that has shocked me. But I have not Googled it to find out if my little pondering was correct. I'm wondering if this whole situation needs some sort of sauce. I've got a Cornish chicken and a salty carrot. So certainly not a soy sauce, big sauce. Maybe some something creamy. I don't have cream cheese, but I do have heavy whipping cream. Oh, no. Trying to have a brain blast. I wish I had a compost. Maybe I should get a compost bin and start composting. I wonder if there's any Phoenix drop off locations. Or maybe does anyone have a garden and I can donate my compost to you? Because I would like that. Here's our summary we made cornflake chicken, we made carrots on the side, we sprinkled green onion on top. Home cooking makes you feel good. It takes a very short amount of time. And it feels homey and traditional. And I feel like with a very fast paced world, if something, one thing that we can slow down and do is cook, then we're, we're already making our way. In summary, we cooked our carrots for five minutes. We cooked our chicken for 40 minutes. We did our dishes in the meantime. Our kitchen is still clean. I feel like that's a win. We did home, we had some home cooking, cooking time. We had some bonding time. We had some storytelling time. We had some cleaning time. So much has gone down and not an hour has passed. Amazing. I'm excited to taste it.